Hey everyone, good to see you. I am out here at our public works department. It's a, it's a really broad facility that covers a lot of different facets of what, what the city does uh, to serve citizens. So we're gonna go in and meet with the public works director. I'm really excited to meet with her. So here we go. Hey Nicole, how's it going? Good Daniel, how are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me here at public works. and out in the big bay thanks for coming yeah, yeah this is where we keep all of our equipment snow plows and all that fun stuff so. yeah so i'm guessing this is busy year round yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> so i was wondering if you could um introduce yourself and your position and then maybe you know what's the main goal and mission of public works absolutely so i'm nicole gleason i'm the public works director and also assistant city administrator and public works provides i believe we have 15 different divisions so we provide services from fleet management services for internal customers of the city, all the way through solid waste collection, sewer cleaning, street repairs. So um, you name it, we do it here at Public Works. <laughs> sure. And then, you know, what are some, I mean, you have 15 departments. What are maybe some secondary things or stuff that you guys do? Maybe even some stuff that people aren't aware of that Public Works would be doing? Sure. Yeah. So we do have a forestry division and that division obviously trims and takes care of trees, but um, we do also some urban wood conservation things when we have time. Um, we also have a clean water division. So we do have a lot of citizens who sign up for creek cleaning with us um, okay. through our natural resources division. So those are some things that maybe aren't as large and frequent that people use, but um, they are part of Public Works also. Well, that's cool. So you could reach out to Public Works about volunteer opportunities then absolutely. to help keep the city clean? Yes, absolutely. We, oh. love, we love the citizen interaction and I think it's important for people to understand their connection with the environment and, and we like to help people with that also. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in relation to, um, you know, uh, setting out garbage cans, I know this has happened to me. I'm a Davenport citizen, proud, uh, and grew up in Davenport. But if we set out like trash cans for pickup and whatnot, and um, let's say maybe we don't get it out on time, uh, I know sometimes trash can gets super full. Is there, can we, can we reach out and have Public Works come and pick it up? Or? Yeah, so we have a work order management system that tracks all requests. So anytime a citizen calls and asks for something, we do track it. So we generally give a citizen a one-time annual courtesy comeback. So we know okay. people forget. We don't want to penalize you for that, right? So if you start calling us every week, though, we'll probably give you a charge. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that would make sense. And that would be yep. fair. Um, and so then obviously I'm guessing the other big thing you guys get calls about a lot is snow. Um, and so I was just kind of curious, you know, um, I, before my wife and I moved recently, it seemed like we had an alley that never got plowed or got plowed but very late. So I'm just curious why that might have been or how things are prioritized with snow removal. Right, so um, really we only plow main roads. We don't actually as a policy plow um, alleys at all. We have oh. around 2000 alleys in the city. So you can imagine how time consuming that would be. Right. Um, the reason you do see some alleys plowed is either the neighbors will get together and hire a contractor mm. or if it's a particularly steep hill of an alley, Lots sure. of times our solid waste division will go ahead and plow that alley before the, the garbage truck comes through just to make sure we can still collect trash. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And so then do you, is, is as far as citizens coming together, is that something that is usually just motivated by the citizens kind of door knocking in their neighborhood and putting yep. that together versus something public works arranges? Exactly, yeah. We don't usually interfere with that at all. Lots of times it's just one of the, one of the citizens happens to have a plow and so they chip in and, and work together. Sure. Yeah. Um, Okay, I mean, obviously there's a lot of streets all through, I mean, you mentioned over 2000 alleys alone yep. uh, and prioritizing street repairs is probably difficult. And I know um, sometimes it can feel like the block over or right next to your house is getting repaired, but not your house. So how, how are things prioritized and organized for street repair? Absolutely, so that gets super challenging because um, asphalt streets are different than concrete streets and, and mm -hmm. the treatments we can apply to, to each is different. So we actually have to prioritize streets based on um, traffic volume. Then we also have to prioritize them based on um, asphalt or concrete treatment because our internal crews really can only repair asphalt streets. Okay. And we're limited in how much we can repair by the Iowa DOT. Sure. So once we cross over usually a block of a street, we have to then bid it um, in, in a lot more different, I guess, processes come into play at that point. So. Um, lots of times if you see, oh wow, they're, they're so close to my house, why didn't they just go one more block? It's 
it's either we got fiscally constrained or it would have been exceeding um, the threshold of what our crews are actually allowed to do. And you know, the, the rules and regulations, I'm guessing, even though they might seem prohibitive at time, they ensure kind of good road care, good road quality in the long term, or? Yeah, a lot of it too is just um, ensuring that we are allowing contractors the opportunity to bid. Oh, so sure. it's a really fine balance between keeping our crews busy um, where our crews are responsible not just for road maintenance but also emergency response so right. you can imagine like when we had the derecho this year everything with road maintenance stopped for a couple of weeks so we could clean up the derecho so right. we have to kind of find that balance of keeping our crews busy yet available for emergency response sure um yep. and i mean obviously with so many different things that you cover um you probably partner with outside organizations as well are there a couple partnerships you'd like to highlight sure or? yeah so a lot of people call public works um for their cable they call us for their water they, so they start calling us for different things that really actually aren't public work sure so iowa american water is our local water utility um, we do partner with them as we do road projects or they do major water main projects to try to avoid tearing the road up twice, obviously. Oh, sure. Um, and same thing with the utilities. So um, right now, as we had 53rd Street under construction, we did give all of those utilities notice and ask them to kind of work on their upgrades at the same time so we wouldn't be cutting into a brand new road. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then I guess even that when it comes to where your crews go kind of depends on what projects present themselves. Exactly. And every year in the, in the spring, we do go through a reprioritization process. So um, a lot of stuff changes in the winter, right? Some roads right. make it through winter great. Other roads get especially torn up by, by trucks. So we basically redrive all of those high priority roads every March and give them a new priority. And that's kind of what shuffles the next year's work. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. So, I mean, is there anything else you'd like to share about public works or something that you love about your job, you know, uh, anything My, you'd like to share? I love that every day is different, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, we have hundreds of employees here. We do great things for the citizens every day. We have our transit buses taking people to work. You know, we have our sewers trucks making sure people can, can keep the sewage flowing to the treatment plant. You right. know, all those good things happening. So um, every day is different. And I just really encourage citizens to follow our Facebook page, to sign up for text alerts when it comes to snow season so they know when to move their car. And just, you know, the better interaction we have with you and communication we have with citizens, I feel the better they understand our services and how we can best help them. Sure. Speaking of water pollution control, I think that's that's where I'm off to next. So yeah. uh, thanks for having me out here. It was great to see things and I'll, I'm sure I'll see you around. Awesome. Thanks so much right. for coming. Take care. See ya. Hey, how's it going? I'm Daniel. Good. Yeah. I'm Dan Myers. I'm the water pollution control plant manager. Um, let's go into the classroom and we'll teach you a little bit about wastewater treatment. Yeah, sounds great. I've All never right. been down here, so Good. let's do it. All right. So, I mean, what exactly does the Davenport water control plant do? I, it's obviously in the title, uh, water control, but of course it's more than that. I'm sure there's a mission that you and your team have and um, yeah. I'm just yeah. curious. We are a uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, Davenport wastewater treatment and what we do is we clean the water that is sent from homes businesses and industries throughout our region and that water comes down in a series of sewer pipes that's collected and it comes to the treatment plant and then we start the treatment process now why do we do that well it's pretty obvious to most people but we want to remove the solids solids mm -hmm. is a critical part of the wastewater treatment plant we have to remove the solids first. <clears throat> we remove biochemical oxygen demand, which is in our terms, BOD. It's a reduction of pathogens so that we can prevent disease causing pathogens from getting to the stream. And we're protecting our receiving stream by doing that. Uh, we're protecting the receiving stream. So the Mississippi River is our receiving stream. So we're protecting our environment. Mm -hmm. And then the main reason is public health. We don't want to create a place where disease and pathogens can persist and cause problems. Sure. Yeah. And so is it, is it just water from Davenport? I mean, where the Davenport control? No. No. Um, um, we are a regional treatment facility. We treat wastewater for Davenport, Bettendorf, Riverdale, and Panorama Park. Wow, I didn't even, that's interesting, I didn't know, I mean, how, how do you, so that obviously a lot of wastewater, how do you clean, how do you clean wastewater? Well, you start by, one, controlling what comes to your treatment process. Uh -huh. We are a regional facility, so we have a lot of industry, so we protect 
our treatment processes by having the industries control what they discharge to us. So that's one major factor. Uh, the other is preliminary treatment. So we get rid of all the debris and the heavy solids by screening. Mm -hmm. And then we pump the wastewater up through another screening process. And then it goes into a primary treatment facility. Right here, primary clarification. Uh, primary clarification, it's specific to the name, clarify. Let's clarify the water. Sure. So we're gonna let solids fall. And then we're gonna let the fats, oils, and grease float. Oh, okay. That and then we sense. decant the water off of that tank. So we have a clarifier right here. So the water comes in the center pipe up and it discharges into the tank and it slowly feeds its way to the side. And as it feeds its way, the water slows down, solids fall, mm -hmm. fats, oils, and grease float. We take the solids off and send them to an anaerobic digestion process and we allow the water to continue to the next process. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. So, I mean, you mentioned, obviously, I think you said organic solids and solids. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want to know, but, I mean, where does that go? <laughs> where, where do the solids go? They yeah, go, where do the solids go? We have to treat those solids. It's part oh, of sure. our treatment process. It's a secondary stream. Um, we mix our solids with primary solids and secondary solids. We blend them together. We put them in a digestion process, which is anaerobic which means we remove the oxygen, hmm. and we allow bacteria to consume those solids, release acids, and then as those solids process and, and treat, they reduce. Mm -hmm. And we reduce the pathogens, they can't survive. And then we send that to a compost facility. Okay. So those solids get sent to compost, and then we reuse those solids as a natural fertilizer that goes back into the ground. So clarification seems to be, you mentioned the primary, but I see on the board it says secondary. So, I mean, what's the, right. what's the difference? Right. Well, clarification, we've removed about 65% of the solids. So we want to do a better job than that. Right. And we've removed about 30% of the biochemical oxygen demand, the BOD. Uh -huh. We want to make sure that that BOD doesn't get to the rivers. So we do a secondary aeration process and we're an activated sludge treatment process. And this is the activated portion. We have two tanks out there and there are a series of tanks. We feed the waste stream into the tanks mm -hmm. and we recycle solids. And these solids are made up of organisms, microorganisms. And these microorganisms are aerobic, so they need oxygen to survive. Mm -hmm. So we provide tons of oxygen in those tanks. So we want to create an environment so that these microorganisms consume the waste that flows through the tank. Oh, sure. So it's a completely natural biological process added with mechanical aeration. So we're basically providing a place for those to thrive. And we build up a mass of those in solids. And then we allow them to go through and we clarify them. Sure. So the solids will bind together with the masses of organisms. And once they get to this tank, they will fall because we slow the water down. Right. Solids go to the bottom of the tank and we recycle them back to aeration. So it's a constant food mm -hmm. source mm -hmm. for them. And we're keeping nice, healthy organisms consuming the waste. And so, I mean, that's where like a chemist or someone would be involved to monitor even your organisms. And we have we monitor water the biology and... through microscopes. Right. We monitor the processes through weights and measures of the solids, the oxygen demand that's taken up in those systems. So there's, there's a pretty uh, scientific process going through that secondary treatment. Um, so, I mean, I mean, what happens with the water once it's been purified? And, you know, a lot of people in their minds, I think, think like, dumping into the Mississippi River, but right. obviously that's not what we do. Right, I, right. You know. uh, the clean water, we, we like to call it clean water. Once we've done the treatment processes and went through all this, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of money, a lot of infrastructure to get it here. We've removed probably 95 to 97% of all BOD and solids mm -hmm. out of the water. And it's clarified and clean. Right. So our clean water gets discharged the Mississippi River for reusing and to protect the environment. 
So, so is that is that water as clean as the water that's currently in the Mississippi, or it's okay. it's much cleaner, much huh. cleaner. Um, okay. You know, the Mississippi River is the muddy mo, right. you know, by right. by definition. Sure. Um, so there's a lot more solid and waste in the river than there is in the stream that we're actually discharging to, and that's why we have permits. Sure, of course. And we monitor those, and we make sure that we meet those and exceed the limits. We try to exceed those limits. Okay. Um, and then, and then I, I know there's there's something coming online with is it ultraviolet? Right, right. So that's a new process that's required by permit. Um, we're actually going to put in a disinfection system, and we're installing it right now. The building's actually being built as we speak. Um, there's going to be 55 million gallons worth of disinfection process built at the end of the treatment plant before the water goes to the receiving stream. Um, so we're going to run that water through a series of light bulbs, mm -hmm. and they're ultraviolet light bulbs. And the ultraviolet actually breaks down the bodies of these organisms, pathogens, uh, microscopic organisms, and it'll kill the pathogens before it gets to the receiving stream. So it's even cleaner. It's even cleaner, <laughs> right. Wow, cool. That's, that's cool. So what about, yeah. what about all the, um, obviously there's gas released. I mean, what, what happens to gases? And gas is a byproduct of the digestion process, methane. Right. Sure. Methane is a fuel. So we take that fuel and we reuse it and generate electricity with that fuel. So okay. we have two big generators out here. We process it, we process the gas, and we send that electricity back to the utility and we get a credit for that. And it's about a half a million dollar value every year for wow. us to process that methane and create electricity. Wow, so when people talk about being green, I mean, obviously right. people are gonna make waste, so right. you're making the most of it, which is incredible. And I mean, this must be obviously not a, a, a 12 hour a day operation and you lock up and go home, uh, you know, no. how, what's the team like? We are a 24 seven. 365 day a year process. Sure. Um, so we have a team of 18 operators. We have a supervisor for those operators. We have a supervisor for a maintenance, which is three maintenance people. And uh, we have a supervisor for our lab. Mm -hmm. So we have a state certified lab and we have four chemists and uh, a pretreatment coordinator that coordinates our industries and follows those permits. And then we have, of course, myself, and we have an office manager here. Right. So there's 31 employees that operate this plant. Wow, and then, and then I mean, obviously there, there must be some pretty, uh, because we're dealing with public health, like regulations, reporting, what are- Right, yeah, right, are we are things? regulated first by the EPA. Mm -hmm. Our permit is, a, is an environmental protection agency permit. And then we have DNR who monitors our permit and monitors our discharge. Okay. So we have stipulations on our discharge of what we can put into the receiving stream in that uh, permit. Okay. And we have to meet those levels. Sure. And I'm guessing that's, is that the weekly reporting, daily reporting? It's a monthly report monthly that report. we do, right? Sure. And then we have inspections mostly annually. Okay. Sometimes it's by uh, two years, every sure. two years. And then I just have my own my own curiosity sure. question because driving down here, I mean, we're down on the river and it's it's a beautiful drive yeah. to come out here to the to the to the plant. Um, how, how does flooding impact your operation? Obviously, flooding is an, uh, something that happens in Davenport. Yeah, flooding is something we have to deal with here at the treatment process, and we're actually going through a uh, flood plan and uh, looking at how we can develop and protect the facility itself. Sure. Um, in 2019, we had eight days where we couldn't get operators in or out, so we locked operators into the facility oh, to wow. make sure that it was maintained and operated during the flood. Right, because you have to continue to process wastewater as you long can't as stop. we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as imagine. we physically can and, and do it safely. Sure, yes. of course. Yeah. Well, cool. I know. I know. I'm heading over to the compost facility to get to see where some of this stuff goes. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I really appreciate your time. Thanks right. for teaching me about this. 
Hey everyone, Daniel here. We're down at the Davenport Compost Facility and I, another place that I've never been. So I'm really excited to look around and find out how they process everything here to turn uh, our waste into reusable compost that we can take away back into our community. So let's uh, go learn about the piles. Hey, how's it going? I'm Hi. Daniel. I'm, so. I'm Pat Lenahan. I'm the supervisor here the Davenport Compost Facility. Okay, well this is really cool. I, you know, I've never been down here, so I mean, it's a lot of action happening. What, what exactly do you all do at the compost facility? Well, our mission is to uh, make useful products out of what normally would go in a landfill. Uh -huh. So we, we're a collection point for Davenport and all of Scott County for green waste. Uh, that'd be grass, leaves, garden material, and trees. Okay. So we take, we take the trees and the woody, products and the woody material and make mulch out of it and um, the yard waste is mixed with biosolids and we create compost out of that material. Okay. Um, I know uh, one thing that was interesting when we went to the um, water pollution control plant was realizing that we you serve not just Davenport but but a whole region. I heard you mention that too with yeah, Scott, we, County uh, and, Scott County. Yeah. So um, obviously you're busy and then you know how exactly does compost get made? I mean, can you describe that a little bit more and uh, what a, it is? It's more of a complicated process than people realize. Yeah. Uh, we are mixing ground yard waste with biosolids, which is treated sewage sludge. Um, and we're using a complex uh, aerobic static pile process of composting, where we're forcing air through the piles and we're pro providing optimum conditions for compost for the de decomposition of organic matter. Sure. Um, and is that oxygen, I, you know, I know with water control, it had to do with microbes and things yes. that would help eat. Yes, and we rely on the organisms to, to do the same thing. Uh, we reach temperatures as high as 145 degrees and higher, which, which will kill plant seeds and plant diseases, sure. as well as, as pathogens that would cause disease in humans. Okay. I mean, so it's a pretty, like you said, it's actually a pretty complex process. It I is. mean. What's the most interesting part of the process? Do you, I'm sure it's all interesting, but as far as what somebody might be surprised to know? <laughs> well, we can do, because of our, our, our process and, and the way we control it, we can do in 21 days what it takes nature to do, what it takes nature to do a year or longer. Wow. So we're able to push it through that quickly. Okay. And then obviously you're producing topsoil. I mean, what, what, what all comes out of the compost we, plant? And... We use compost. We, we use compost and potting soils, another, another one. Potting soils. To make garden soil. We add sure. a little sand to compost and potting soil to make garden soil. Okay. Uh, we sell mulch and a new product for us is uh, split firewood. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm guessing w a lot of lumber down here right now, yeah, too. Yeah, we get a lot of lumber. <laughs> um, so, then, so then, I mean, how do you get your hands on that? Is that something you come here and purchase, or do you sell it elsewhere? Or? Uh, yes, uh, all our products are available here in bulk and in bags, except for the mulch. We do not bag the mulch. And uh, during spring seasons, you can go to the garden centers and, and find our products as well. Hmm. Interesting. So, I mean, you know, they say staying green. It sounds like that's... We're doing That's our, what this is all about. We're doing our best. And yeah, yeah, doing our best. Well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate your time, and um, I'm going to go look around a little bit, if that's all right. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. Sure.